a fan of supernatural horror, today we're going to talk about how to write your own weird tales according to the method put forward by H.P. Lovecraft himself. Hello, my name is Charlie and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to write your own weird tales according to the method put forward by H.P. Lovecraft himself in the essay titled Writing Weird Fiction. Funny that. So I'm going to have my glasses on while I go through some of the basics here. In honor of H.P. Lovecraft, you may hear my cat meowing in the background because she wants into the office. I want to record a video, so I'm pressing on. I would like to begin with the fact that, yes, I know, H.P. Lovecraft is in simplest terms, problematic. He was a racist, sexist, misogynist, anglophile who really didn't like anybody who wasn't himself or Howard Loveman. Other than that, he did write some really compelling fiction and unfortunately, it's really hard to understand modern supernatural horror, a lot of urban fantasy, dark fantasy, and quite a bit of modern horror without understanding him and his methods. I am not saying this to condone any of the weird, strange, bizarre and hateful views that H.P. Lovecraft had, but he did have some interesting ideas when it comes to actually creating weird fiction, a genre which he pioneered, if not invented himself out of whole cloth. That being said, let us begin. According to H.P. Lovecraft, there are two categories in which we can find all weird tales. There are those in which the marvel or horror concerns some condition or phenomenon, and there are those in which it concerns some action of a person or people in connection with a bizarre condition or phenomenon. You can see there the common thread in weird fiction according to Lovecraft, that of a bizarre condition or phenomenon. And when you think about his work, the work of Brian Lumley, the many of the books by Christopher Golden and other authors who have continued in this, including some of the earliest works of uh, Stephen King, you can really see how this plays out as a key cornerstone of the genre. <laughs> He further breaks down the genre into what he calls the four distinct types of weird story. One expressing a mood or feeling. Two, another expressing a pictorial concept. Three, expressing a general situation, condition, legend, or intellectual concept. And four, explaining a definite tableau or specific dramatic situation or climax. Again, when you look at the types of fiction that do exist in the genre, that's a really good way of thinking about it and a really good way to brainstorm. Which of these types of weird stories do you want to write? At this point, I would be remiss if I didn't say you can easily use either the quadrangle or the lock method that we discussed in previous videos to come up with those basics for your weird tale and I highly recommend that you do so. Each weird story should have a particular type of horror. Lovecraft himself defined five types of horror that you can find in a weird tale. And I think that these are actually a good way to break it down and kind of look at the topic. Is the story A, some basic underlying horror or, or abnormality, a condition, an entity, etc. B, a general effect or bearing of the horror. C, the mode of manifestation, the object embodying the horror, the phenomenon observed. D, the type of fear reaction pertaining to the horror. And E, the specific effects of the horror in relation to the given set of conditions. Let's break that down a little bit. For the first one, this is fairly obvious. There's a monster out there. There's a plague. There's a strange abnormality that is creeping through our population. What are we going to do? Something in me is changing. I don't know what it is. A lot of vampire stories, especially about the changing into a vampire, really fit into this category. In the second type, the general effect or bearing of the horror, here it is. What has happened? What are we going to do? How are we going to get through this? Exploring the effect, the after effect, the, the, what is being brought about as a result of the horrible or strange thing happening. The mode of manifestation is one of my personal favorites. The Call of Cthulhu fits perfectly into this. Our hero finds a weird statue and some documents and starts going through them. 
This is the mode of the manifestation. You see this a lot in Cursed Ring stories. There's the box that we don't open. All of those kinds of stories. Those fit well here. In the type of fear reactions pertaining to the horror, this actually would be a Night of the Living Dead fits very well in this particular category, and I do mean the original one. The real horror of that is not the zombies, it's the human reaction to the zombies that makes it frightening. The actual horror element is the reaction rather than the thing being reacted to. That is a powerful way to write a story, by the way. The fifth one, the specific effects of the horror in relation to a given set of conditions. This one makes sense. Think about the thing. The thing works really well. They're trapped down in the Antarctic. They know that one of them is an imposter. How are they going to determine who it is so they can keep the infection from spreading out into the rest of the world? This one is so popular that people are still playing with it in a game called Among Us. Like this is, this one works really well. We have given a very strict set of conditions. We have put the horror in place and we are watching how the relation between these conditions and the horror play out. The first Alien movie was pitched as Jaws in Space. And yeah, because what happens when you can't get out of the water, right? The solution to Jaws is very simple. Nobody goes swimming again. As long as you don't go swimming, shark ain't gonna get you. Yeah, but when the shark is crawling around in the ship that you can't get out of, that changes everything and makes the story much, much more interesting. So Lovecraft came up with five general steps to writing such a story. Step one, prepare a synopsis or a scenario of events. He talks about this as an outline, but he really kind of means this more the way we would talk about a zero draft today. Write it out. Exactly how does it work? What What is going to go on? He actually recommends that as long as we hit all the vital points of the story, to do this step fairly quickly because we want to capture the idea as viscerally as we can. Step two, he refers to as the second synopsis of the scenario. In this one, we go back through and we focus more on narration, not the actual occurrence. How are we describing it? What are the words? What are we talking about here? Really fluff it out, make it make some sense. What is the perspective, the stresses, the climax? First draft, we were focused on the events. Now we're trying to do a layer of language. In the third draft, we write the story. According to Lovecraft, this should be a rapid, fluent, and not too critical pass. In this version, we go through, we change the incident and plot whenever the development process seems to suggest such a change. And that's the point. The purpose of the first two was to get a general idea of what happens and how we want to talk about it. In this draft, we are actually creating what he would consider an actual draft. I would consider this more of a first draft in my method of counting, but to each their own. In this version, by the end, we should have a story. A basic story, but a story. It should be readable as a tale. In the fourth step, we revise the text, paying attention to the vocabulary, syntax, rhythm of the prose, and all of those other things that we do during editing. The fifth stage, which I'm still including because I absolutely love this because it shows the age of the document, prepare a neatly typed copy, not hesitating to add final revisory touches where they seem in order. Yep, stage five, type it up because this is in the world before computers when all of these previous drafts were in handwriting. Yeah, so there you go. That's Lovecraft's method for writing a weird tale. I kind of like it. I've used it a couple times. In fact, I used it when I wrote the story, The Confirmation, for Orla's anthology series. And I might use it again for the next one. I really like writing weird tales, and this is a great way to do it. What about you? Are you going to try to write some weird fiction? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. What do you think about this method? Does it sound like what you already do? Does it sound different? Are you at least tempted to write a supernatural horror now? I would love to know. So please let me know down in the comments. If you haven't already, please do like, and if you want more content like this, subscribe. You should also hit that notification bell. I stream twice a week on Wednesdays and Fridays, and I'd love to have you there. We generally get quite a bit done. If you would like to help me keep making these videos as well as support everything that I do, you'll find links to my coffee and my Patreon account down in the description box below. And since the world is a large and open garbage fire, and it doesn't seem to be getting better anytime soon, let us remember Black Lives Matter, Black Trans Lives Matter, Trans identities are magic.
And until next time, may you have the courage to ride your dreams into reality. And don't forget to have the fun. Bye. Thank you.